the third game. Both get another shot, so yeah. Right. Well, we'll see if Navi can do it then. We're going to go into the second game here. If Navi lose, they're out. We send it over to our commentators. It's Toby and Sinran. Thank you very much. We are here for game number two of Navi versus Cloud9. Where Sindarin man, Navi is staring down the barrel of not reaching their first TI final. They've been there every single time. It's been tradition. They've been in this position before a couple of times, so... Uh, they're probably the team I would expect having the highest chance of bouncing back. So mm -hmm. if they don't, it just means that this year they were not the better team. Because yep. um, as, as far as pressure and experience goes, they are the best you can get. Uh, so. I, I like their draft a lot in this game, actually, with how they've tried to approach uh, Cloud9's draft and how they will be putting their lanes. I think overall this lineup for me, for Na'Vi, suits them a lot more than the previous one does. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, did. Agreed. Uh, they've still... It's a little bit different than, uh, than what we usually see from them, I guess. Funic Veno is something they've played a couple of times. It's not really a standard Funic hero, per se, but in this game, I think it's going to work very well. And they have great synergy with their big teamfight ultimates. They have the late game, and... More importantly for me, or one of the most important things in this game is that they actually counterpick the TA. I feel like we see so many games the where TA actually begins. doesn't get countered. If you want to counter this hero, you need multiple instance damage that just removes refraction. They have the Eidolons, they have everything about Venomancer, uh, they have Invoker with Forge Spirits, I'm assuming he will go Exot, and they even have the Death Ward from Koro. So a lot of ways of dealing with the TA. And this time around Cloud9, when they're playing Envy on a position 1 Doom, I would consider this draft from Cloud9 way less scary to play against in the mid-late game than the previous one. So even if Na'Vi trade farm, I think they just have a, a better shot from the draft in this game. Yeah, I agree. Man, Na'Vi's got everything they were really desiring. It's really nice strength in lanes. I also love the way they've approached their lanes. They've thrown Funnick as a Venomancer into the middle lane up against Sing Sing. Interesting to also watch his choice there with the Poison Sting going up against Sing Sing. Well, up on top lane, the Vorse has to do it tough. He's going off lane up against Highlight Eye as well as Eternal Envy, but he knew he'd be having the melee Void up here, so life was a little bit simpler. And on bottom lane, Bone 7 is being harassed out by Kuro. Now, the Witch Doctor has a real great time up against the Tanunda very early on. His base down Damage of 58, especially his range, is really, really nice. And he uh, doesn't have to go boots first, just 305 movement speed. But it's enough to drop Bone 7 down to half of his life, especially when Bone 7 went anchor smash at his first level. And so doesn't have a stout shield as well. And one. doesn't have a stout so. shield. So he's dealing up with that. He's dealing up with the harassment, the potential bouncing cast. And then you've got Dendi, Mr. Exort Bill, which means you've got potential sun strikes coming in. If maybe he'll force him oh, get Oh, found Bone 7. Mm. He will tango out. Just push him out of the trees. Dendi's not able to help out just yet. He was level 1 on Invoker, one of the weakest level 1 heroes in the entire game. Not really got that good stats. He can only attack, can't actually level an active spell until level 2, and now he does. It's going to be the Sunstrike. You should check out his build too. He started off with the Blades of Attack, realizing that CS is the most important thing to him when he's running this safe lane Invoker. He needs fast levels, he needs really good experience, and he needs to make sure if the Titan does come in range, he can at least hit with a level of pressure, which is a problem for Bone 7. Because right now, Bone 7 has still managed to find three levels on the offlane. Second point of crack in the shell is up, and this is what's going to work out nicely. I should also look towards the middle lane. We've got an 8 to 0 Venomancer. Now he's running Plague Wards, up to level 2. Now Sing Sing's going to be farming this up to the CS. Might be a little bit deceptive with this, but Sing Sing is still sitting at 17 for 0 here in the middle lane, making the most out of that bonus damage from the refraction. Venno generally isn't that good against TA until he reaches a certain level threshold. At level 5, it gets a lot easier for him. Funic is not actually in a lot of trouble. Um, there's no gush, though. I don't yeah. think they can actually even make this kill. I don't think they can. He needs there's the no perfect slow. body block. Th there's, there's no slow. Your body block is literally the only way they can stop Funic right now. And Funic, okay, maybe Radiant's with Aoi coming in with a troll He's trap. Coming. This should be the first. But the courier actually the first. And then Funic will follow through. This is a disaster for Na'Vi. The only upside they can take from this is Vol came in top lane. Havorce leaps himself away from Pylai Die. Not enough mana for a shock. Envy with the Scorched Earth also. Not enough damage to kill a Void. Man, these lanes are meant to be working well for Na'Vi, but they've lost Coria at like the flat point. At least it's only a melee, so it was down for, what, not as long, but still. Great start for Cloud9. They shouldn't expect to win the mid lane very early on. If TA gets off a good block, she pretty much loses to almost no hero. I, the only one that really comes to mind to me that just flat out destroys TA in lane is the Razor. Uh, if, you, if you have the good, the good starting block, even then you can still get a couple of CS. But Veno is going to get strong lane. soon. There's your, sha there's your shackles uh, again still, holding him there. He's going to jump. Yep. Okay. But they force it out. He's down to low life. He's already used his salve. He's got to go all the way back to base. This is a boss off the lane and not finding experience. 
Now Furnick is going to get level 5 though. I'm going to put a lot of em emphasis on this mid lane because Na'Vi have actually put this lane specifically to try to counter out the TA, which they definitely haven't been successful with just yet. But when Venno hits level 5, the wards become a lot stronger, so Sing Sing can't just one-shot them anymore. And he will be putting uh, a lot of consistent harassment Toro, to be able to push Toro, too. bottom lane, Bone 7 is with the Cold Snap, the Sun Strike. It is available as well, but Kuro is long of life and Bone 7 trying to force the issue. He's took a 5 stick charge, but it's not enough damage, not with the restoration. Now the Mountain Cast coming back, Sun Strike still available. Bone 7 turns in, Anchor Smash can take away all the damage here of Navi and the Sun Strike's off target. The Sal from Bone 7, he's going to deny himself for the neutral, cutting himself through. He's still going to live 25 life points. The support's coming in, but he's looking for a kill, but sees he's going to come up in Boca. We'll keep picking him up, but Funnick now, he's going down to Sing Sing, back over, then he needs to help, now nah, he's got enough five points, 29, regeneration room gonna get pulled oh. up, he's denied it, then he actually denies the regeneration room there. So Sing Sing not getting the joy at the end of it, he hesitated to pick, he hesitated to pick it up, he was right there, it was on his fingertips. Uh, he, he got cold snapped actually, he was right next to it, and then he got mini stunned and the, the room got destroyed by Dendi. Nice play there all around, pretty much. I would still say just the early game leading stage easily favoring Cloud9 once again, similar to game number one. I would say this time around, Na'Vi have more to play around with, especially the Enigma that we haven't seen active just yet from Puppy. I think it's, it's the right call here to not gank mid lanes early on. The bottom lane should be self-sufficient, and Puppy should be able to just farm up a lot here in mid lane with Funic against the, the TA. It's you know, now. it's unfortunate that the, the mid lane for Funic went the way it did, since if the Courier hadn't been killed, even if he gets first blooded, he will be okay, I think another but he lost a lot of potential there, yeah. The courier is going to survive for now because they waited for the jump in. Of course, he's still got two points up on the time walk, but the troll trap's going to be there. He leaps himself down and is actually completely away from them. But C9 will now force the T1 tower with the walk down. Radiant's Unless Navi is going to rotate someone up here to help out of Wars. Yeah, they're going to use the glyph for now. Envy doesn't have a creep yet, actually, Dyer's so they don't have any aura to, uh, to go with the center aura, only that one. But this is still easily going to be enough. And I, I want to point out how much I love the Orb of Venom pickup on Doom. I think it's a great choice when you're playing against a melee hero in lane, just to get Radiant's the extra harassment in the slow, and they've, they've been able to pressure those just a little bit more because of the Orb of Venom pickup, and it's, it's paying off. Here goes the tower. What level is Savos right now? He's level 5. So he's the same, nice, slightly ahead of the Dire Tide. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but, yeah, it's... Overall, I guess he's going to be okay with losing his tower now if he can find some farm, but... Still, when the Radiant and Dire offlanes are the same level, I, I would generally say the Dire offlane has, has got what he needs. The difference between the C9 Dire offlane uh, is the fact that you're able to run the Ancient stack with the Tide Hunter because of obviously the way Anchor Smash as well as Kraken Shell now works. So, Quarion 7, when he wants to, he can just power level, and that's something which Havost doesn't have, have an option for. He is still meant to be that main man that jumps in with Chrono Spears and makes the openings. So he needs to make sure that the other lanes, like Dendi as well as Funic, really start to capitalize. And one person, which I know we haven't even mentioned his name within the last almost seven minutes, is Puppy. He's there in the jungle, and he's almost level seven. We've forgotten about the Enigma, and I'm wondering if C9 has as well. Uh, you got Owies rotating around, did some nice work, ganked up in the lane, nicely done. But Puppy is still free farming and not being stopped. At the very least, because of that, they're keeping up an experience, but slight concern here for, for Navi fans is that Cloud9 are ahead by 3,000 gold with only one tower, and that's against the Enigma, who usually gets an economic advantage. Now, it is a little bit skewed because of Devour, so... Yeah. Well, you get Devour that and Pylas, and now the Lord, just... the Doom is on him, Pylas is right behind him as well. Is he going to Shackle him? It's a mini body block, and then goes into the Shackles. Of course, no time jump attack. away from this one with the shock damage. He knows he's dead, hides in the tree lines, but does go down. While the middle lane from Navi, they're pushing. A lot of play wars down here, and the TPing in support. Cloud Nine. They want to defend this one. Bone Seven arrives, but there is no Ravage available for this Tide Hunter. And Enigma, Midnight Pulse, is already going to force most of C9 back here. And the Play Quads keep the pressure up. They're converting, actually. Owie is taking it away, Puppy's conversions right now. But he's looking to keep the pressure on as well. Puppy's still got this Black Hole available. And Tide Hunter, he's not cracking his level 6 from being here. Oh, and now he's really he's coming in as well. Here There's we go. In. There's your Chrono 2. Owie as well as Bone 7. They focus down the Tide Hunter. And he will go forward. He's got to go down the head of God from Owie. Keeps him up. Cool boss. He bailed out too early. And they didn't finish the job. Bone 7 still alive. Conversion. They're going to focus him with the Anchor Smash. Taking away all the damage. They're locked for the tree line. They break it. Better man's it though. Him through the rear. He kills off the Tide Hunter. Then he's got the Chen as well. That's 4 for 3 on the board. Running into double kill. They take they get the mid tower, mid and maybe they keep the pressure moving down mid. They don't have Chrono, however, this must be taken into account.
But since Dendi didn't rotate, he's actually doing some great damage in the bottom lane as well. So Cloud9 will probably have to deal with that issue as well. Else they're going to lose two towers for the price of none here. And great rotation from Navi. Incredible how long that Tide stayed alive there with the Anchor Smash and two points in Kraken Shell. And speaking of Tide, he's going to get Boy. jumped here by Void. Instant time lock. They brought in the support too. Gal's going to go on Void 7. He's still not level 6. And remember, then he's actually shackled up. Paladai holding in position. I mean, Sing Sing with a Mel Strike will have enough damage. A boss, he's got Leap in two seconds time, but Doom is now cast over him, so he cannot leap away. They need to help him off Funnic. No Gal, he's got Plague Wars. Throwing him down, trying to slow down Eternal Envy. Maybe they can go that are not going to happen. Sing Sing right his tail. The now Envy, Malifus Gale as well, Conversion Army going to remove the Refraction Charge there of Sing Sing and Envy. He is still low on life, the Bouncing Cask. Ravage! Koro, there's your Ravage, but it's uh, merely a defensive one. Okay. And the Bouncing Cask is not allowing him to escape too easy. The damage is still coming in as they walk past the Plague Wards. Kuro's keeping up with them, but Naomi now Sunstrung. He actually oh, what? They gathered to make sure he would survive. Did he hit him only on the edge? How did Dyer's that only town. hit one hero? I don't know. <laughs> That's unbelievable. They literally like try to be birds of a feather. They That's the together. perfect snipe out of Dendi. Really well done. That's so the reason, one tower too. The reason I was laughing at the Ravage, it wasn't a bad Ravage. You hit three heroes. It was Dyer's just so anticlimactic. It's like, wow, you hit three heroes with the Ravage and then they just... It He's was been a, waiting two and a half minutes to get the Ravage. It was in the middle. He's like, I didn't have enough experience. Bottom lane started. I didn't have enough experience. I get it and... Space created. It was a disengaged Ravage, but I don't actually think Cloud9 needed it. They had psionic traps, and it didn't look like Navi were advancing that much mm -hmm. with their movement, so maybe Bone7 thought they could get a counter initiate, or he just saw, oh, many heroes. Better use my ultimate. But <laughs> at the end of the day, Navi get one kill out of it. They do secure the tower as well down here, so they're also going to be a lot be more push pressure. Poppy's got the mech flying out, and they might oh, how he gets spotted Owie. out. Void jumps up, he's thinking about the chrono, he's got to. He actually stopped Pilot either Sun Strike. There's not enough damage to kill off Howie, but funny from the low ground, you're doing a more. Heck, dumb it out, you black hole! Heck, up Bone 7 and Koro! The combination with the ward! They're brought down one Pilot Eye to a boss! Bone 7, Koro! He just looks at a go! All over Sing Sing now! He's the last one of the life! Time lock on Sing Sing too! Koro with a double kill! He that wants to finish him with a fraction charge, it's one defense! He goes in for Sentry ward down to boss, Mel Strike really hitting him hard, the mech charge, there it is from Puppy. He jumps He's away from attack. Tomato Smasher, and they'll come in close from the tier 2 tower. Kuro, get rid of that Hellbear. As the tier 2 tower will be forced out, there's a Wild Wing in the neighborhood Dyer's as well. He'll see it, now they're going to TP out, in fact. Dyer's Let the tier 2 tower go. They force fortification, and Denny is forcing the tier 1 tower top lane. Such a high value play there coming out from Navi. It's not just about winning the fight, it's about the fact that, again, Dendi isn't there. He's top lane, he's almost getting a tier 1. They got a 4 for 1 trade, they put a lot of pressure on C9, and now that Ravage Bone 7 didn't have there really ends up costing them. Navi just taking as much advantage of the situation as they can, really pushing Cloud9 to their limits right now. And with this top tier 1 tower going down as well, Dendi will try to secure it here. No deny on Cloud9. 9 for 5. Man, this is when Navi is at their most dangerous. Hexobank from Pilai Dai. Where's his shackles? It's gonna be there. Four spirits will turn on Shadow Shaman, and the Doom will go as well. Now, Pilai Dai, he's a negative six armor. A turnaround here from Denny can actually kill off Pilai Dai. At the same time, Plague Lord Gale. Pilai Dai, you can't survive that. And now, maybe, Vavos, no chrono. He's not close to Eternal Levy, but there's your denial. Venomance was waiting for it to tick out. Chen also really on low life. It looks like Koro was playing around with him. He let off the ultimate and almost killed off Aoi. 24 life points on this guy. It's almost worth a buyback to Sunstrike. But he's not going to. If Dendi buys back, I think Aoi takes a different path than the stream. <laughs> it will be a big flag, man. It will be a big flag. Man, but Navi, they're gonna be really up now. They go, hey, you got a good, you got a really, really good fight in the bottom lane. You're finding pickups, you're getting escapes, you're getting denials on your own heroes. So C9 aren't getting everything they really want to do. And Navi are a very, like, they're very much like C9 as far as emotions go. When they're high, you're moving really fast, you're moving really forward, and you've got confidence to make really big plays. And when they're down, you doubt yourself. You still play good Dota, but you doubt your movement if you should jump in or not. And that's something you can't really afford to do when you also get like a tight rabbit. Bone you seven. Wait. Yeah, he's got scouted out here by a midnight pulse chrono. It's gonna be committed right now off on that top lane, eternal envy. He will go down. There's help coming in from Pilai Dai though. He hacks up a boss, shackles him too. Oh, he lives! Poison though. That poison's sticking him out, but the score shows keeping him alive. They can't finish the job. Envy being sent back to base right now, and he's home. In fact, he's home twice. <laughs> <laughs> he got sent back in the TP.
But Void goes down for that one. At the same time, Navi do get the kill on the tight Dyer's one, though, so this is going to open up the map attack. a little bit. They'll be push putting more pressure on the mid lane with Dendis and Volker here. It's quite amazing. This is really reminding me of how IG tend to play their Invoker when it's on Luo. He's just farming a side lane. He's always got the global presence with the Sunstrike and keeps pressuring towers with the Forge Spirits. And then when he does need to be a part of the fight, he will join in. But for now, Navi have been managing to take these fights with only the Sunstrike from the Envy coming in bottom lane. This cask is not going to bounce to anything as that is a Siege Creep. So yep. Envy will be all right. I think Might Puppy also realized here with the Doom. I realized Puppy wasn't really ready to fight. So he's, he's got his Soul Ring. So if he wants to, he probably won't be enough for his Black Hole. But with and the with combination the... of just those two is enough. Yeah, Death Ward is ready, and now Void joining the fight as well. I want to point out how interesting it is to see uh, Lost in that off-lane faceless Void position, by the way. The, the way Na'Vi have chosen to put their lanes and distribute their roles in this game has worked out great for them. He's doing a, a wonderful job on the, on the position 3 faceless Void in this game so far. Gonna get oh, the tower for his troubles. It's on a boss. Probably gonna, gonna die for right now, but... He's got a Mel Strike coming up from Sing Team with the Bouncing Cast. The Meg Tower to keep him alive, but now Witch Doctor. He's just trying to make his way for the Ulman. Parlay has to hex him up. Sing Sing, he's coming in deep puppy. Still not enough mana for his Ulman. A boss low on life. Koro gonna be looking for the denial. He leads himself away. Where's your back row damage? Now the Shackles of Pylai die. Trying to hold him down next to Mass Serving Boards. And that's gonna be a kill already. Top lane is still being forced out by Funnick. He's just still up here pushing the lane. And what's really lost here? You lose Enigma. Denny is in no man's land. Keeping himself out to safety, right between Aoi as well as Sing Sing. And maybe the trade-off is going to be for Rojan, but Panic is still going to take this tower. Envy cannot defend the tier 2. Navi are really taking a lot of advantage of the fact that C9's lineup isn't the best fighting lineup right now, unless if they get a good Ravage. Chen's pressure hasn't really been that big in this game. They managed to secure a tower early on, which was great, but... Apart from that, there's no Blink Dagger on the Shadow Shaman to initiate the fights. The, they generally go for their plays when Doom is on cooldown or when there's no big Radiant's opening for the Doom or, or the Ravage He's thinking, he's thinking about it, he's gonna get gushed up, he's still gonna sleep away, but he doesn't want to have to use that now, because he knows they're going Radiant's for Roshan. It's a half life, so Denny's gonna send his little Necro unit in, that poor little melee warrior makes his way in, and now, the, in fact, the other one turns on him, the Archer belongs to, to Aoi 2000 now, and he has a battle of his own little minions. I would have liked to see that one-on-one -on -one play out. I like to. He, he takes his own money because he kills it off. He, he just earned 100 gold. Radiant's right, bottom this is a 16-minute Aghanim Scepter on Funic. He's getting close to level 11 as well. Navi has taken great control of the map in this game. and they're, they're, If they can keep up this amount of pressure, they will easily be taking the tier 2 mid very soon and perhaps transitioning into Roche. And the pressure is so much on Cloud9 right now because any failed Ravage or any bad Doom and I just Dyer's don't know if they can take the teamfights anymore. Attack. Once again, the Chen's pressure isn't really there. No mech available yet, even for Aoi 16 minutes in. Uh, Shadow Shaman Dyer's has been making a couple of plays here and there, but Cloud9 realized that they just can't teamfight right now, the way the way things are looking. Oh, Bone 7 might be in a little bit of trouble. Kuro's gonna find him. The main one they're looking at, though, is the fact that Aoi is right on top of the Observer Ward, so he's considering bringing that one down. Now get rid of at least his Satter, and there's a Wild Wing also running out of here. While Funic just keeps the, the eyes of Cloud9 split between the lanes. You've also got Pylite Eye. He can't TP out. It's 15 seconds still on cooldown now on the bottom lane. Havors is right next to him. He's gonna start bashing in the tree line. There's no way out. He's locked in by Chicken. And now gone. Dead on the bottom lane. And Havors also ended up ha having his Mask of Madness flying in at the same time. So next Chronosphere, we're gonna have a very fast attacking Faceless Void. Not to mention that level 2 Necro book is rapidly approaching for Navi. I'm curious to see what approach Navi takes now. So the role distribution has made a lot of sense to get to this stage, but when they want to break high ground, they don't really have a carry yet. So Dendi can do a lot of damage with the summons, of course, and they do have the Eidolons, but if they don't manage to transition well into late game and get the most to be a, a strong carry here, Navi's late game is actually kind of underwhelming. Venno can be good, but you can counter Poison over pretty quickly with BKB the and Invoker. Same story. So when Cloud9 start getting BKBs up on the uh, on the Templar Assassin as well as the Doom, I think they definitely have a fighting chance. But by the time they have those, though, you're probably going to be seeing a Blink Dagger over on Puppy because he's about to finish his own BKB, which is going to make the Ravage very much a nerd up against the uh, up against the enigma and then what are you going to do you're going to keep casting doom over on the enigma every single fight you do that you free up every core of navi to do whatever they want Dyer's middle that might be what they have to do actually oh this is a big item pick up at the right time coming in for cloud nine this is he sell for that? this is the play they have to go in. for he goes on highlight dying to shadow shaman and now the ravager will go it hits on almost all of navi they've broken the center of the bank line 
almost enough to keep him alive. And now the win for the wrong corner. He's looking for the Oliver Polly for the Doom Bringer. Well, after she casts it off and over on him, he's just taking out of the position. The time lock for the Wars. He goes down. So the Agency model will bring him back to life again. Seems like they're forced to buy back here if they want to defend their high ground. There's a Wars is alive, pumping to soak up the Dyer's entire Doom. And now they move towards the front lines. One wild wing. Sacrificing himself to buy an extra second there for C9. But the fortification also must be used here as C9's tier 3 tower is under siege. Kuro's death wards in this game have been amazing. He always gets a long channel and then always hits relevant targets every single time. And Radiance because of that, now he's going to claim another one here for seven going in. He doesn't have Ravage though. This jump in may be not great. Die, die, die. Time lock. The bouncing jump he goes behind him. He'll get the master of force off. Of course, he's blocked him for six seconds. And then find him out. They do so. They get rid of the wards. Even the new from Chen's not enough. And Sing Sing, he keeps getting attacked by all these late wards. He's only got one charge of defensive refraction left. And they bring down the range ranked here, Navi. Any man that can take that. Again, Pro 7 in, Dyer's takes away the damage. Puppy actually helping off Matt was over on Sing. This is the boss time lock done. Right, he's walking into it. The Invoker will take the kill. Dendi on the mark. And Envy back to front lines. And there's your black hole. Oh, Pro 7. He tries to drag back Eternal Envy. And it will be a time. It is. Pulls him out, but Pro 7 still gone. And the melee ranks will fall in directly after. Sing Sing dead for 50 seconds. The only thing that's protecting them is that their top rank tier 2 tower is still up. But the bottom potentially rotation. The Navi without. Without the AGC model, without the hole, without the death ward, actually they have that back up again, and they may as well back up. Navi have done such a great job in this game at punishing the greed for Cloud9. When we look back on how this game developed and how the laning stage started out, it makes me wonder if going for the Midas in this particular game on the TA was the right call. They went for Midas on Doom and TA, so going for a very greedy approach in towards the mid game. And Navi has a lineup that you can just see what they want to do. Yep. They want to push with the Eidolons, they want to push with the Plague Wards, with the Forge Spirits from Dendi, and then they build for items that aren't effective yet. The Midases haven't paid for themselves until you get Dyer's to this about 20 minute point. So Navi, th that 4,000 gold that Cloud9 have spent into items Dyer's that are not giving them any value in fallen. direct fighting, yep. direct engagements, just means Navi have so much more to play around with in the fights. I would say Dendi's Midas has easily been worth way more than He's the other so far up! Envy. He actually blinked himself out to find that one. A boss just drops the chrono down. The deafening blast from Denny will get the kill. But what's more risky is they're about to come up. Okay, Chrono's down, Black Hole's down, but Kuro's sitting there with an Agnum Scepter Ultimate. If C9 come into this and they do not have a stop stop Kuro, that ulti is just going to shred them apart while their ranks goes down. And they're looking to have a crack here. No, Maybe it's not nice. it's just, they don't Ravager care about it. Goes. All five heroes, but they really don't care. Venom throws the ultimate out the map. That's what the down they use. The Shen ultimate for the Witch Doctor. Kuro oh my god! It just evaporates. GG! GG, 21 minutes in. And Navi hit back here in game number two and forces us to a decider who will be the first team eliminated from the International Four main event. Navi or Cloud9 is going to come down to one game soon. Fantastic game for Navi. For me, the, the standout performance in this game is, is Kuroki on that Witch Doctor. Just yes. amazing ultimates. The cast were on point the whole game. And even though the early game for Navi was looking a little bit grim, the greed from C9 really gets punished. They drafted a lineup that didn't fight into that that well. Going for the Midas, I think, turned out to be a pretty big mistake.